Hello everyone, I am Be Better Gamer and welcome to Be Better Gamer Wrestling, the channel dedicated to wrestling video games, fueled by my love, passion, and obsession for them. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I am playing WrestleMania 2000, bringing you another one of my created wrestlers. We're getting quite a, quite full over here. I already filled up all of the original one cause. You can check them out on my channel. I have a whole playlist of all my WrestleMania 2000 cause. But now I am bringing you my King Kong Bundy call. The walking condominium. <laughs> as Gorilla Monsoon used to call him. Hailing from Atlantic City, New Jersey, I'm guessing that's where the nickname came from. Standing at 6'4", he was a monster amongst monsters in the 80s of WWF. And unfortunately, he passed away early in the year in 2019. So this is a little bit of a tribute call for King Kong Bundy. I have fond memories of watching him as a kid. Uh, and I wanted to take up the challenge of making King Kong Bundy in WrestleMania 2000. It was mentioned quite a bit when he passed away early in the year if I could make him in WrestleMania 2000. I'm finally getting to it. I tell you, eventually I'll do it. So we're going to start with the body. Body size 7, skin tone 0. So one of the bigger calls I've made. I think he's the biggest call I've made so far in WrestleMania 2000. Uh, ring attire zero. That's the default ring shorts as you can see here and then keep it zero with the color as well upper body 42 0 and 21 21 is the true black in this game uh, If you want to get that really good looking black the other black looks like kind of green I don't know is it just me head three skin tone again zero. We don't change that face I went with face nine hair. We don't go with anything for the hair. He was bald um, zero, keep it for zero. You don't have to change hair too, although I put it for zero because I'm OCD. Uh, equipment, we go with wristband one, and then we change it to white, which is number two. Knee pad, I went with the number seven knee pads. They look actually really good on his body type. When you play the match, you'll see. Uh, and we went again with black, number 21 color. The boots, I kept them all black, 21 and 21. Sometimes he had white laces on his boots. You'll see later on in a call I do that. But for his main outfit, I kept it all black because sometimes he did wear just, just straight up black boots with black laces. Here, for his second outfit, we just remove the accessories. This is based off of his WrestleMania 1 look. So remove the wrist pad and the knee pad. Here is based off of his Survivor Series 87 look. We just add one knee pad and we change it to knee pad 1 21 black as well and we remove the other knee pad not a lot of variations here in the outfits uh, <laughs> I wanted to make four different outfits this is what you're getting folks this is a very slight very slight alterations here once again knee pad um, 1 and then here is where I added the white laces this is more so after his Survivor Series 94 look, you could say. Uh, and that's the call for King Kong Bundy. Super simple to make, super easy to make. His moveset, really easy to make as well. There's a few things I wish I could do with him that I'll get to in a bit, but if you wanna get the full call, make sure you check in the description below. I have it all typed up in a Google spreadsheet, all the moves, appearances, everything, so you can make them in your vanilla version of WrestleMania 2000 on the N64 or if you're playing on an emulator, however you're playing this game in 2019. We're going to jump into a match, King Kong Bundy versus The Undertaker. Let me know in the comments what you think of this call. Uh, you know, leave a like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. You've been on YouTube before. Check out my other calls. But if you want to stick around, we'll talk about King Kong Bundy for a little bit as we go into a match. WrestleMania 2000, I love the Aki games. I love WrestleMania 2000 and all the rest of the Aki games. The one thing I wish that WrestleMania 2000 had that WWF No Mercy had more of is more like hidden characters that were like legend wrestlers or past superstars. I think King Kong Bundy would have been a great hidden character. You know, in the modern WWE games, there's so many hidden characters, so many past superstars, and I love that. Virtual Wrestling 2 has an extensive amount of hidden characters and a lot of hidden characters in that game are all like legendary wrestlers. Um, WrestleMania 2000 doesn't really have that. You have Shawn Michaels who were still kind of active around the time. Um, and then Jerry Lawler, Jim Ross, 
You know, there's not really a whole lot of legendary characters. Andre the Giant's not even in this game, which is weird because he's in Virtual Wrestling 2 and WWF No Mercy, but he's not in WrestleMania 2000. So that was one of the reasons also why I wanted to do King Kong Bundy because if we're going to do like hidden legendary wrestlers that you would unlock in a WWF game at this time, I think King Kong Bundy would have been a good fit. I'm picking Undertaker because his last WWF pay-per-view match was actually against The Undertaker at WrestleMania 11. He lost to The Undertaker, of course. Undertaker was still kind of early on in his streak. He goes 4-0, defeating King Kong Bundy. But let's go way back to the 80s when King Kong Bundy made his debut in 1985 for WWF. He had wrestled for a few years previously in the AWA in Mid-South, but he was quickly snatched up by WWF and pushed as a monster heel. Of course, a guy of his size, you know, we're talking the 80s, everyone in WWF was huge at the time, but it was also to feud with the big baby faces like Andre the Giant, who King Kong Bundy had a feud with very early on in his WWF appearances. Again, starting him out on top, you know, Andre the Giant was one of the more popular wrestlers in WWF at the time in the whole world at the time but you know he was a monster heel squashing dudes squashing random jobbers all over the place what made King Kong Bundy stand out was the five count he would do his big avalanche splash which was basically just a running body splash which they don't have in this game they have the standing body splash the standing avalanche splash you'll see me using this match a few times trying to beat the Undertaker with it but they don't have the running version of it. The running version of it would be added in in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. Again, very weird because Virtual Wrestling 2 comes out just a few months after this game. And I always thought some of those moves that weren't in WrestleMania 2000, I always thought it was weird why they weren't in there when they would show up in WrestleMania and Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. But anyway, I had to compensate with that. I gave him a bunch of other his avalanche um, moves, you know, avalanche body attack running avalanche splash into the corner here you see me just now doing the big walking side slam there it is the big avalanche can we put undertaker away with the big no he kicks out he kicks out it's a tough move to win with i gotta be honest <laughs> i gave him for his front special the bear hug which is another move you saw him do and dominate people with the five count was such a cool gimmick uh, and I'm surprised it hasn't been utilized a little bit more. Big E used it in NXT, and I love the way Big E used it in NXT. Uh, Big E is a future world champion in my book. He's got to bring back that five count. Uh, he had so much swagger with it. It was so, it's such a it's such a great gimmick, you know, like someone who's so dominant that they want the ref to keep counting an extra two seconds. He would eventually meet up against Hulk Hogan, obviously the biggest babyface in WWE. And again, very early on, you know, WrestleMania 1, we saw him uh, beat SD Jones in like 8 seconds or something like that. 9 seconds, I believe, was the record they said it was. It was actually like 15 seconds. But he beat SD Jones, and then a year later, he's main eventing WrestleMania against Hulk Hogan in the classic steel blue cage. Uh, on King Kong Bundy gets color in that match. Because, you know, back in the day when you were in a cage match, someone bled. And that was probably the highlight of his WWF run, honestly. That was the biggest thing he did so early on. Book to face Hogan. You know, the monster heel run against Hogan. He would lose because, you know, it's Hogan. It's WrestleMania. And next year at WrestleMania 3, he's nowhere near the main event. He's actually in a mixed tag match where he teamed up with Little Tokyo and Lord Littlebrook against Hillbilly Jim and the Haiti Kid and Little Beaver. And the reason why this was a mixed tag match is because Hillbilly Jim's and King Kong Bundy's partners were little people. They were little person wrestlers. And it was a short match and Bundy was DQ'd because he attacked Little Beaver, which he wasn't allowed to. Bundy was only allowed to attack Hillbilly Jim. He wasn't allowed to attack the little person wrestlers. So he gets DQ'd because of it. Uh, such a weird sort of transition from being in the main event, I think, from WrestleMania 2 going to WrestleMania 3. In 87, he lost in the finals of the King of the Ring to Macho Man. And then we would see him in the main event of Survivor Series 87 on the team of Andre the Giant. Now, Andre the Giant's heel. He already had the match with Hogan at WrestleMania. 
And you have basically Team Hogan versus Team Andre the Giant. The real star of this show is Bam Bam Bigelow. The crowd goes crazy for Bam Bam Bigelow in this match. Bam Bam Bigelow is the last person on Team Hogan left standing. Hogan got actually counted out before that. And he fights all the way to the end, even eliminating King Kong Bundy, but losing to Andre the Giant uh, in the end. And we wouldn't see King Kong Bundy for a while after that. He would be semi-retired. He would disappear from a little bit. He would show up randomly uh, at house shows and on the indie circuit. We wouldn't see him return to WWF until 1994, about six years later. And his first WWF reappearance was actually at a Survivor Series, ironically, where this time he was part of the Million Dollar Team instead of the Heenan family team. And Bam Bam Bigelow was actually on his team. Uh, so it kind of kind of strange how that all worked out, right? King Kong Bundy would actually be the sole survivor this time around. So returning back to WWF in dominant fashion once again. Uh, he would compete in the 95 Royal Rumble, his only Royal Rumble appearance ever in the WWF. And then that would bring us back to WrestleMania 11, which I mentioned in the beginning, where he would face The Undertaker, lose to Undertaker, his last WWF pay-per-view match. Uh, he would eventually be released from WWF in 1995, but he would still wrestle up until 2007, uh, wrestling on house shows and the indie circuit and making special appearances. He never really had as big as a run he did when he went against Hulk Hogan for WrestleMania 2. Uh, but I think he would have still been a really cool unlocked character in WrestleMania 2000 and you know he passed away when he was 63 he had a career that spanned 27 years you can find him in two other WWE games 2k14 and Legends of WrestleMania where he is hidden character he's unlockable in those games so there you go that's my King Kong Bundy call I actually had quite a bit of fun making this call because I remember King Kong Bundy as a kid, I, I remember the Hulk Hogan match, but I hadn't really remember anything else he did, and I was kind of surprised to see how limited his run was in WWF, but still kind of memorable because people talk about him to this day. So I hope you enjoyed this call. Check out my other Let's Plays and calls for WrestleMania 2000 and other wrestling games. Follow me on social media at BeBetterGamer, and until next time, you know what to do. Keep watching all the wrestling. Thank you for watching.